without any further ado, let's move on to the, our session. Protecting identity. And today we have Dishan Francis as our speaker. Good morning to you, Dishan. Well, good morning, Shamo. Dishan is a security consultant at Microsoft UK, a technology evangelist and author, public speaker, dedicated and an enthusiastic information technology expert in the field. So, once again, without any further ado, Dishan, the virtual stage is over to you. Um, thank you, Shano. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I want everyone. And um, let me quickly share my screen. Hopefully now you can see my screen. OK, so. Um, I'm going to start uh, today's session with a story about iconic castle in heart of London, and this is called Tower of London, and it was built by uh, William the Conqueror in 11th century. To date, it is uh, recognized as the most secure castle in the world. And uh, from 13th century, it was home to the crown jewels. And even today, the crown jewels are um, stored in there. Because of its uh, security, as well as the location, um, it was an infamous prison as well. So the person in this picture is uh, Colonel Thomas Blood uh, in May 1671, uh, the colonel disguised as a Christian priest and visit the, car visit the castle uh, to see the crown jewels. These crown jewels uh, were stored in the basement. The keeper of the jewels, Edward, was living with his family upstairs. So Co Colonel Thomas is a very good people person and he quickly became friend with Edward and he said he will visit again uh, with his wife. In a later date, as he mentioned, he came with his wife to the castle again, but this time they waited until all the visitors uh, leave in the evening. And then Mrs. Blood pretend that um, she got a violent stomachache. So as expected, uh, Edwin came to help. Um, she was taken to Edward's uh, apartment to rest. This particular incident made them very good friends. Uh, they visit each other's place uh, a few times and they exchange um, gifts. Edward's, um, Edward had a, a beautiful young daughter. At some point, Colonel Thomas said, um, I got a wealthy nephew who is actually looking for a bride. So if everyone agrees, he can arrange a meeting between Edward's daughter and um, his nephew. So both families agreed and later date, Edward visited the castle again with uh, his nephew and two other men. While the couple was um, talking, the Colonel asked um, Edward if it's if his friends can see the uh, crown jewels. So as um, Edwards unlocked the door, Colonel Thomas hit him with the mullet and stabbed him with his sword. And then Colonel stole the crown jewels. It is the most secure castle with high walls and hundreds of guards uh, in duty. Yet Colonel Thomas was able to steal the crown jewels without a fight. So actually what, what we can learn from this, um, the perimeter defense security model never works 100% even in the past. All these um, castles had a breaches at some point in the history. It is because enemies always find a way um, to get in. This is exactly what's happening today with cybersecurity. Attackers uh, 
attacks are getting more sophisticated. If you think about the network, um, our crown jewels are our identities, data, and IPs. We set up a firewall around these crown jewels and expect everything to be safe. But we shouldn't forget that there are people like Colonel Thomas exist. They can steal from us without a fight. Um, there is a way always, um, and um, it's just a matter of time. So what we can do about it? Um, actually, the answer is obvious that we need a better security model. But why we do exactly need a better security model more than ever? If you think about a digital transformation roadmap for a company, it can spread um, through a couple of years. There are a lot of things to uh, think of, such as budget, uh, software and services, licenses, business partnerships, skills, training, pilot rollout, production uh, implementation, and so on. Also, security is a bigger part of that. Um, however, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, things change. Uh, McKinsey and Company is the American worldwide management consulting firm, and they recently done a um, a survey using 900 C-level exec executives. So according to this study, responders confirm um, their companies acted 20 to 25 times faster than expected when they implementing uh, digital transformation strategies. When it comes to remote working, companies moved 40 times faster. So in this journey, the hurdle wasn't the investment or the technology, it was there, but it was time. When times start to cost us money, uh, when times start to affect the sales, manufacturing process, and uh, supplies, workforce produ uh, productivity, we do not have, to uh, have time to evaluate all the pros and cons. We do not have time to do all the groundworks. So, we will have to take risk. We will have to bend our rules. But when we rush things as humans, we tend to make um, mistakes. Some of these mistakes um, open up opportunities for cyber criminals throughout 2020. So with, with this accelerated digital transformation, things are no longer the same. We collaborate with customers and partners more. We no longer can stick into company managed devices, especially with the chip shortage currently we have. We can't buy large number of uh, devices in a short period of time. We can see companies are moving more and more into cloud apps. Even the vendors are moving to SaaS model. Uh, so as I mentioned before, the perimeter defense model is no longer valid because especially remote workers are um, connecting from more and more unsecured networks. So we can't put a parameter around um, all these connection points. And there's also another factor for rising cyber crimes. Um, over the last three years, we noticed that the market building around attack services. Anyone with money now can buy tools, services, resources to do a cyber attack. And they do not even need to have a knowledge or skill to hack. There are people who sell like malware as a service. Funny enough that you can buy 1000 compromised account just for $1. And if, if we think about the ransomware, they even have an affiliate model. They can give they give you all the tools, resources um, uh, you needed for the attack. And in return, what they expect is 30% from your profit. So where all these lead us to? If the traditional security model is not um, working in this new world. What we can do about it? This is where zero trust come into play. 
The concept uh, behind the zero trust security model is very simple. We need to treat every access attempt like it coming from an untrusted network. We shouldn't make exceptions based on the location, job title, or the privileges. And the other thing is zero trust is not actually a product or a service, it's a mindset. Let me give an example for that. So my house, I have uh, two doors, front door and the back door to the garden. So both these doors have locks. I also have doors in uh, all, to all other rooms in my house, but there's a difference. They doesn't have locks. They only have um, uh, the handle. So this is a very good example for uh, perimeter defense. So we have one secure entry. Once you pass that barrier, uh, you can move freely within the parameter. Uh, so this, this is same for intruders as well. So if someone break in, they also can move uh, within the parameter like the owner. But in the other hand, if I go to my office, from car park to my desk, I have to go through like five, six different doors. And to go through each door, I have to use my employee ID. So every time I go through a door, they verify my identity. Now, this is not only for me, this is same for my colleagues, my manager, even for Satya, it's same. So that's why I said zero trust, we shouldn't make um, exceptions based on the location, the person, or the privileges. Okay. So zero trust is a simple concept uh, that follows three core principles. The first one is uh, verify explicitly. Always authenticate and authorize based on who the user is, where they're coming from, and devices they're logging in and their status and also what data and applications they're trying to access. The second, uh, the most important one, I would say, uh, use le least privilege access. So we have administrators with uh, higher privileges um, than they needed. So what we're saying here is use um, security principles such as just in time and just enough access um, to limit their privilege. So I, I will explain that these in details later um, in this session. And third one is assume breach. So it doesn't matter uh, what protection we have in place. We need to remember that we fight against human adversaries. They always find a way in. I mean, it's just a matter of time. We focus on um, uh, protecting high valued assets and then the attackers came back with uh, supply chain attacks. We made um, services uh, which cannot be turned off, the protector uh, like antivirus services, but then attackers came back with the firmware level attacks. So uh, as I said, we need to assume a breach. Microsoft made 10 billion last year by selling security services. And we have very successful products such as uh, Defender 365, Azure Sentinel in there. The, the one of the main reasons for su um, successful of those products is um, these are built with this assumed breach mindset. Um, next slide. So the zero trust approach uh, should extend to the entire digital state. So organization um, do this by implementing zero trust controls and technologies across the six elements uh, that you can see in this slide, which is identity devices, data, infrastructure, apps and networks. Um, each organization's zero trust journey is unique. Actually, it can start from any pillar in here, but most logical part, the most customers use is the uh, identities. And so this is what um, today's session is about. I'm going to propose five things that you can use to protect your identities. These five points are covering these three principles I talk about uh, in zero trust security model. 
And before we go into this um, five uh, so, uh, points, uh, I want to talk about a uh, starting point. So the starting point on this journey also should be a strong one. It's like a cricket match. If you if you need a good result, you better to have a good start. And um, the start point I'm proposing here is to consolidate secure access to all application by using um, Azure Active Directory. Um, this sounds like quite controversial statement. You may say, hang on, I, I have Active Directory in my environment, uh, perfectly work working, and I have all the application authenticate using Active Directory. So why I need cloud identity? Before we go into that, it is important to understand what is uh, identity and access management system. So identity and access management is a solution used to regulate um, the access lifecycle of a user within an organization. The main role is uh, main role of access and um, identity and access management system is to make sure the right person has um, right level of access to the right resources for the right reason. So identity and access management solution have four main components. The first one is um, a directory that store user identity data. Um, in other words, it's a directory service. And second one is um, set of tools to provision, modify, delete users and their privileges. Third one is a service to regulate access and privilege using policies and workflows. The fourth one, the important one, the system for auditing and reporting. This is where you can um, improve further. And um, so Active Directory is not an identity and access management system. It is falls into the first uh, component of an identity and access management system which is a directory service. But today, um, authentication requirements are complicated. It's, it's not just about username and a password. So we need to manage the whole life cycle of identity. We need to automate um, things, procedures using policies, and um, we need better insights. So that's why I'm proposing uh, Azure Active Directory to start with. Um, the other thing is Azure AD give you same access experience and uh, 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 protection for any application. So it doesn't matter where user uh, logging from or which application they access. So the logging experience is same. And this is also same for the external users such as business partners and vendors. They will have the same uh, type of uh, access experience. And Let's move into the first strategy. Um, strengthen your credentials. So last year, uh, we noticed about like 230% increase in password spray attacks. One of three attacks on enterprise involves phishing. And um, yeah, it, it is true that attacks are getting more sophisticated, but majority is attacks. It, it still use this kind of uh, fundamental tools um, to do the attack. And um, those have very higher success rates as well. So even the pen testers, when they do go to do a pen test, they use um, password spray attacks as um, one of their tools because it's have a higher success rate. And um, attackers don't break in, they log in, they need some sort of uh, initial access to system. So this is why strong authentication is crucial. And also always ensure that users are who they say they are at every access attempt. And we also need to regularly confirm their trustworthiness. Multi-factor authentication protect users application using second uh, source of validation it can be a phone call, text message, or a token. But this doesn't eliminate the password use. Back in 2004 at RSA Security Conference, Bill Gates said something like this. 
there's no doubt that over time people are going to rely less and less on passwords. People use the same password on different systems. They write them down and they just don't meet the challenge for anything you really want to secure. So this is back in 2004. Passwords are breakable and the more that you use the password, the more you make opportunities for attackers to steal credentials. That's why passwordless authentication is quite important. In passwordless authentication, your password doesn't leave your uh, device. And it makes um, this, this method help make MFA more convenient for user. So there are different technologies that we can use to enable passwordless uh, authentication. The first one is Microsoft Authenticator, which supports biometrics, push notifications, the one-time uh, passcode for any Azure AD connected app. And this app is free um, to use. The second was, one is the Windows Hello. So this is inbuilt service, which comes with Windows 10 and 11. So uh, instead of password, you can use the facial recognition uh, to log in. Third one is uh, FIDO2 security keys. Um, you can buy these security keys uh, from partners like Ubico. And um, I've I done several uh, articles about how to implement um, passwordless authentication with FIDO2 uh, keys. So if you like to know more, just go to my blog. And um, interestingly, uh, the interesting thing is uh, we already have over 100 million users who uh, enable the password authentication, which is good. And so we have few options, um, but what I'm proposing here is use the most secure, usable, and cost-effective method uh, for your business. The ultimate goal should be the passwordless authentication but you can start this journey by enabling MFA today. And um, I need to mention something about the password because people say by enabling complexity of the password, it make it more secure. And the truth is, it's not. If you think about it, if you tell a user, use a complex password, they're not gonna use like random pass characters in their password. They, going to find the easiest password they can remember, the easiest complex password they can remember. That's why these password uh, spray attacks still have a higher success rate. And other thing is if you using credentials in applic uh, application, um, please replace those with uh, uh, Microsoft uh, managed service accounts or group managed service accounts. You can do it today in on-prem. Uh, environment and if you use Azure, make sure that you use um, uh, Azure AD uh, managed identity so you can avoid using password with your applications. And next thing is um, legacy authentication. So apps using their own legacy methods to authenticate with Azure AD um, and access company data. This poses another risk for organization. POP3, IMAP4, and SMTP clients are a um, good example for legacy authentication. The problem that we have with uh, legacy authentication is um, we can't apply MFA or any other advanced security uh, validation to it. So with your application, make sure you use uh, modern authentication such as or, uh, open ID which support MFA and um, conditional access. So there are a few action items for you. Um, enable MFA for all your admins at least to start your journey. And think about your strong authentication for all users. It should be passwordless journey, um, but you can start with MFA today. And also block legacy authentication so we can um, use conditional access policies to do better um, uh, security, enforce better security. Second point here is the reduce attack surface. Azure AD help to 
reduce the, your attack surface through multiple technologies. One of these technologies is um, conditional access. So conditional access is the number one benefit that customers quote um, as the reason for choosing Azure AD. Conditional access makes um, MFA even more effective by um, prompting user only when it is necessary. So with the conditional access, we collect signals such as um, user location, devices, applications, and their sign-in risk, and use these, um, verify these signals um, with the policies in place before we allow or deny access to application and data. The other problem we have with the, is the privilege access. Um, we have users with more privileges than they needed. So if, if these accounts get compromised, it is an easy win for attackers. In a typical environment, these privileges um, of an account increase with the time. So it, it starts small and then the user say, oh, I, I don't have access to this system. So you have grant another set of permission to the user. So likewise, it, it's, it's keep going. And with the time, the user have um, higher privileges than they needed. And so for that, what we're proposing here is to you not to have standing admin access. Instead, your admin should have just enough access and just in time access. So what what's just in time means? So um, the user will have their privilege access when they need it. Let's say a, a user doing a certain administrative task and for that it's, he, it will take an, uh, one hour. So we provide um, privilege access just for one hour and after that the permission will be automatically revoked. And just enough access means um, user will only have privileges to do a, a certain task. Nothing more than that. So this method helped to reduce your user uh, risk profile. So even the user get fished or attacked, your overall risk is uh, vastly reduced. And furthermore, um, to re really reduce your attack um, surface. You want to use advanced uh, governance solutions such as uh, Azure AD and title management. What it does is it provides a lifecycle management to uh, your employees as well as um, external parties such as partners and vendors. You can create predefined packages of resources that contain um, resources such as groups, apps, um, SharePoint sites. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, let's think that uh, your sales department running a marketing campaign, and this is running for seven days. Certain users need access to certain applications, and some of these um, users need higher privileges than others. So in a typical environment, how are you going to do that? You normally assign them to a uh, set of groups um, and assign the permission. But um, how are we going to manage this? So in a larger environment, you can miss um, the manual administrative tasks. Like let's say after one week, you need to manually remove these users. So if, if you have more work to do, it's possibly um, you will miss that or you will do it after th uh, three, four weeks. Instead of that, using um, access packages, we can say, um, uh, we can define policies who can request access for how long. And um, also we can say uh, appro ad uh, approval workflow. Finally, users uh, access will be granted and it is time bound and uh, it will be continuously monitored through Azure AD access reviews. So two action items for you. Um, enable just in time access using privilege identity management in Azure AD. 
and block invalid authentication points using conditional access. Use uh, entitled management access packages wherever possible, so you avoid the manual uh, labor. And uh, also, you need to review this privilege access by using access reviews, Azure AD access reviews. So, uh, what is that? So, in the environment, we assign privileges to users uh, by adding them to groups. And if you use uh, role based access control, you may add users to um, roles. And in some cases, you may uh, add users to applications as well. Um, so all these are done manually uh, most of the uh, time uh, and it's time consuming and also we can make mistakes um, so with the access reviews we can automatically review these uh, privilege access uh, it can be weekly monthly and also we can attach um, actions to it uh, let's say you found a privileged user who didn't use their access for last 30 days, so they don't really need that. So you can say if you find, find someone um, who didn't use their privileged access for last 30 days, just remove them from the group. And also we can delegate um, these access reviews to uh, department heads or the other team members, so they can go through these uh, reports and take the actions um, that required. And third one, uh, we need to admit that uh, there is a skill shortage in cybersecurity field. It is important that we use security professionals uh, times more productively. Uh, an engineer can be working eight hours a day, but attackers, um, but attacks can happen in any time of the day. So when the engineer noticed the event, it can be too late. Also, when there is an incident, we may receive large number of uh, logs and alerts. It can be overwhelming sometimes. So as a human, uh, we can miss these alerts or emails. So that's why we need uh, automation, uh, automation much as possible. So we can uh, reduce these uh, human errors. <coughs> Azure identity protection is continuously improved by machine learning. Um, it learns from threats incident detected in uh, Microsoft ecosystem. The new machine learning system logics uh, with real time risk evaluation continues to improve as we talk. Based on these improvements, um, identity protection can identify many types of risk. If a risk is detected, we can pass those signals to conditional access policies and trigger uh, remediation actions automatically. I'm going to uh, demonstrate about conditional access policies later on this session. And in here I listed um, the main risk types identity protection can detect uh, as example for the leak uh, credentials, uh, system will verify credential with the compromised accounts found in dark web. Uh, anonymous IP address uh, detection means the connections that coming uh, that uh, coming from anonymous proxies. The other thing I'd need to mention in here is um, this list is keep updating as we found new threats. As example, after the Nebolium attack, now we can detect um, compromise HAMO tokens. Right, so few more action items under this uh, strategy. Require MFA or block signing, uh, risky signings via conditional access. What, what it means is like if you detect a risky signing, you can either enforce MFA or you can completely block the access. And the second point also related to that. So if, if you detect a risky signing, you can enforce users to do a secure 
password change. And this can be done using conditional access and self-service password reset, which I'm going to cover uh, in, uh, later in this session. The fourth one, uh, utilize the cloud intelligence. There are a ton of rich uh, actionable insights available to you in Azure AD. As mentioned in the previous sections, um, identity protection deliver insights such as uh, risky sign-ins, impossible travels, and so on. We can use this insight to monitor as well as troubleshoot. Um, another source of insight um, is privilege identity management, which delivers insights such as uh, number of uh, inactive admins in your organization or um, admins who doesn't have um, MFA enabled. Not only that, we can also use workbooks um, to visualize the logs, uh, which is related to conditional access, legacy authentication and access package activities. And further, we can stream Azure AD activity logs identity protection logs to cloud native SIEM, such as uh, Microsoft Sentinel, to create uh, dashboards, custom reports, custom alerts, and so on. We also can use um, Sentinel to do uh, advanced threat hunting uh, based on these insights. Um, we also can use pre-built workbooks uh, to identify well-known attacks in your environment. This also gives you opportunity to use KQL queries uh, to visualize collected information and create custom alerts or reports. And also we can use KQL queries to do advanced threat hunting. Also Sentinel, so capabilities can use to automate um, incident response. So this is aligned with what I uh, propose in uh, the third uh, point. Couple of uh, actions items. Watch for the emails alert. So enable email notification for privilege identity management and identity protection in Azure AD. And check your identity security score. So this S, uh, score is calculated uh, by comparing your current um, security standard in place with the Microsoft best practices. Uh, practices. So if the score is low, that means you have a lot of things to do. And monitor your Azure AD audit and sign in logs. Um, so that will help you to un uh, see if there is something unusual going on uh, in your environment. And also use these inside to strengthen your conditional access policies. So use this information um, to do better um, security. Um, for your environment. And create dashboards uh, that you require. So let's say you want to see certain information. This can be different from one organization to another. So you use these uh, uh, available workbooks uh, or the workbooks share, shared in GitHub to visualize this information uh, according to your requirement. The fifth one, empower end users with self-service. Um, when we apply new security policies, security settings, one of the major concerns we have is how we can, uh, how it's going to affect user experience and the productivity. To have the balance between security and productivity, it is important to provide self-service uh, tools to users. Uh, seamless sign-on. Uh, single sign-on is one of the essential uh, steps towards making employees more productive. And the other thing is the centralized uh, application portal that also helps to improve user experience and productivity. It doesn't matter where the application is. It can be in cloud, it can be on on-prem, but users doesn't have to go to all these different portals to access the application. But by using the centralized application portal, they can access uh, all the applications. And um, 
the other thing is self-service password reset saves time for everyone. User doesn't have to depend on IT department uh, to reset their password. Uh, after, once you enable that one, so the user will have to go through additional security verification in order to do reset their passwords. Uh, security is everyone's uh, responsibility. I'm sure you, you heard this many times. We also can delegate certain security um, tasks for end users so they can uh, collaborate on this journey. In my sign-in page, users can review their sign-in logs. If they notice something suspicious, they can um, flag it right away. Then the system will automatically point the user to security info page to do a secure password reset. Couple of um, action items, then I will go straight to the demo. Uh, the first one is empower your users with self-service uh, tools, such as password reset, uh, group memberships, application access, and use Azure AD access to review the privilege uh, access use. And again, use um, entitled management of the access packages wherever possible, so you, you can avoid the human errors. And last but not least, train your user how to use the risky signing, uh, how, how to recognize a risky signing and um, how they can go and reset their password when required. Okay, so with that, we can go straight to the presentation. Let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. So in I have a, a on-prem environment and in this environment I have a web app, a simple web app and let's assume this is some sort of like an internal application. And this is running on IAS, and um, it's also have Windows integrated authentication uh, enabled, which means so any user um, in my on-prem can use their Windows credential to access this application. So what I'm going to show in here is how easily we can add some of these uh, things that we talk about in, in today's session. Uh, and improve the security of this application uh, within short period of time. To do that, um, I already have Azure Active Directory uh, integration with my on-prem. I have uh, Azure AD Connect install and sync all the users to Azure AD. And apart from that, I needed this application proxy. So this is very lightweight uh, agent. What it does is it uh, securely pass your Azure AD sign-in token to your um, on-prem web app. Um, it is very simple to install and it doesn't need um, additional firewall changes. Uh, the only thing that it should able to do is like um, talk to Azure AD on port 443 and this is an outgoing um, access. So in most environment, you allow 443 uh, secure access to uh, uh, go out. And um, so this is, you, you don't require a very complex uh, firewall changes to do that. So once this is installed, I'm going to go for the configure on app. And I can give name for my app and then it's asked about um, internal URL. So in my case, it's rebel app one. And it's create a random URL here, external URL. So this is the URL that you can use to access this application directly. And yeah, so we do authentication using Azure Active Directory here. And that, that's all you need to configure this. And after that, you can just add 
um, this application. So I, I already done this part. Once you've done it, it will appear here under the enterprise application. So you can see Rebel App 1 available in there. So this is my on-prem app, which is added to Azure AD. So if I go to properties, I can see the home URL for the app with this icon. You can change it uh, to whatever you want. And access URL, this, uh, this looks complex, but it doesn't really matter because we're not gonna ask you the users to type this one. We're gonna access it through um, application portal, the central application portal. And I also grant access to some users. I'm not gonna allow everyone um, to access that. And so let's see what's actually user will see. So I'm I'm here in my app portal and I'm gonna use login as a end user. Let's go ahead and log in. So when I log in as the user, I can see the app in there. So this is my on-prem app. I did, if I click on that, now it's asking for MFA. So I have MFA configured in my phone. So let me go ahead and approve that request. Yeah, now I can see the app. I can see I don't, I, I just don't have like a direct access to this application from internet. I'm logging from um, my home connection. And um, so still we can access the application. So this didn't take uh, much longer. You can finish this by within 15 minutes. And um, so you saw that it's prompt for MFA. So what actually happened behind the scene? So I have conditional access, two policies in place, so, uh, but one is disabled. So the enable one, if I go in, this is this is how a conditional access policy looks like. So uh, we can assign the target, like the which users this applies to. Then I have which application. So this is my on-prem map. And uh, these are the signals I talked about before. So I can use um, these conditions if, if required. So risky signings, uh, device platforms. So if, if I need to block access to high, um, high signing risk, users with high signing risk, I can just evaluate this uh, condition with the access request. In here, I'm not using any condition. This is because it's difficult to um, do it in a uh, live demo, but I used the access control. So I'm granting access, but I'm enforcing MFA. So that's why you so when I click on the application, it's prompt for uh, MFA. And so let's let's go back and see how, how we can do another quick policy. So in here, I have a policy set up here. So what I'm, I want to do in here, I'm targeting the, this uh, on-prem app, I'm not using any condition, but here I'm granting access, but I'm saying user should um, access it using a hybrid Azure AD join device. And also the device should mark as compliant. So this is comes with the uh, Microsoft Endpoint um, manager service, so um, you can set up policies to evaluate your uh, health of your uh, end devices. So but I'm go not going to show in that one, but uh, what I'm trying to do is like um, prevent other users accessing this one if, we, if they're not coming from a uh, managed device. And um, the other thing is um, when you enabling a policy, you can enable the policy with report only mode. What it does is like, it's not 
you set up the uh, policy by not going to block anything. So this is a good way to start your um, conditional access policy deployment. And uh, by in here, I'm set it off uh, just for the demo purpose. I'm going to enable this one and you can see how it's going to affect. So let's turn off the other one. Just for time being, so then we know exactly which one applying. And um, the other thing also is the what if scenario. So if you have a new policy before you enable that one, you can um, run it and see use it, like how it's going to affect. So you, you can uh, simulate the access uh, and see how it's going to affect with policies. So anyway, so we, we have the policy in place. Let's go back to the application. Sign out. Yeah, let's try to log in again. As the end user. And let's click on the application. Yeah, as expected, um, it's prevent my access because I'm logging from a, a external device and I don't have hybrid AD join. So as you can see, it is it was very simple to improve your application using the zero trust uh, uh, methods. And um, uh, this experience is common for all your applications, not just for uh, cloud apps. It's, you can use it for any application you have on prem. And um, I think that's that's all I have to share. And if I think it's time for questions. Um, Thank you, Disha. Uh, yes. So let's move on to the Q and A session now. So Disha, we are having one question from one of our attendees. It goes yep. as. Uh, Foreseeing the rise of threats to digital identities. Mm -hmm. How you see the future of digital identity measurements should be involved? Um, it's a good question because as I said, we continuously um, fight against uh, human adversaries. They are humans, it's not machines that we work against. And um, so our Take, uh, our approach is um, changing uh, according to the threats that we detect. So it's, it's a continual improvement process. And um, uh, so one one of the uh, trends is uh, that Microsoft working on at the moment is um, to have one identity. So verifiable, uh, verifiable identity. So in the future, um, we all will have one identity, so all other um, uh, services. This can be government, uh, any other private or uh, public service. So they will all use one identity, which is belong to us. So that's that's one of the things that are uh, uh, going to happen um, in in near future. Thank you, Dishan. Um, yeah, just a, another kind reminder to everyone. Please be sure to type your questions in the Q&A section if you haven't so far. So yes, we'll move along with the second question, Dishan. Mm -hmm. 
what are the trends in the digital identity? Um, yeah, the, it's the one thing I mentioned about is the verifiable uh, identity, which is belong to you, not the company or any other party. So it's that identity is going to belong to you. And other than that, um, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think that that's that's one of the major uh, trends that we have uh, apart from the zero trust uh, approach for the identity. The zero trust journey is still relatively new for organizations, so we uh, it's going to continue for a while. And um, last two years, we talking more and more about uh, zero trust. I think not only Microsoft, it's other vendors also uh, going on this route. And is it not a Microsoft product? It's just a met method that um, you can use any tools, to be honest, like uh, as you want to go in this journey. Okay, thank you, Dishan. Uh, in case uh, you need to, uh, if you have any questions, you can forward them through social media uh, or as you can um, have them on our feedback uh, through a feedback through our application. So, Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, that's all the questions we have so far. So, um, Dishan, uh, is there anything else you need to uh, say? Any comment before we wrap up the session? Yeah, um, two things really. I will be uh, quick. And uh, the first thing is um, uh, my third book is releasing um, end of this month. So I'm happy to give away um, 10 copies. This is about Active Directory and how it's going to uh, work in hybrid uh, world. So if you're interested, um, please uh, send a message in LinkedIn and I will um, give 10 uh, free copies away. And uh, the other thing is big thanks to uh, organizing committee and they done wonderful job. And um, I know with the pandemic, it's 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 uh, very difficult to do this kind of event. So, but um, really appreciate uh, your effort, uh, efforts, um, and um, thank you very much. Thank you. Right back to you, Dishan. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It's the pleasure is ours. So yes, so thank you very much again, Dishan. We are humbled and honored to have you today with us. And thank you very much for the great and fruitful uh, session you conducted. 